What's up people of YouTube and welcome to my Singer Sewing Machine Project. Um, this video is going to be broken down into three different parts as far as commentary is concerned. The first part is going to be me going over my project, letting you guys know exactly what I'm doing and stuff like that and what I'm working on. The second part is going to be me um, talking to you guys about my brief history of, well it's not a brief history, but it's my history of, you know, working with, you know, clothing and stuff like that and customizing clothes and, you know, working with sewing machines. And then the third part is going to be me popping up an old video which I never uploaded on YouTube but it's me showing my older projects I did before and stuff like that and it's going to be inside that video I end up talking to some details about how to use the sewing machine and different you know techniques and stuff like that so instead of me giving new commentary I'm going to give that video a part of that video inside this video and it's going to be cool too because I'm going to show you guys an old denim jacket I made from scratch you know a whole denim outfit that I never completed but it's one of my favorite things I made and every time I show somebody they really really love it so and then also at the end it's gonna be me you know giving you guys a little show showing off the different jeans and stuff that I worked on and stuff like that so without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video all right so I know some of you guys are scratching your head right now you never knew your boy had them skills you know what I'm saying look at your boy working working hard boy look at that uh, like I said the hobby collector it, it's, it's no that's an understatement so to start this whole thing off, I was given about 15 pair of jeans about two to three years ago because the person that gave them to me know that I work with jeans and I know how to customize, you know, clothing and stuff like that. All these jeans that you're seeing, that you're gonna see inside the video were all too big for me. Um, I took them in and that's what a centrist does. You know, if you all know what that is, that's a person that work with clothing and stuff like that and taking fabric in, taking clothes in is pretty much sewing along the original you know sew line and taking it in about an inch or a half an inch to make it fit or whatever so you're looking at a pair of jeans that i did actually uh that's going to be shown inside the video these i took these jeans in these these were way too big for me super baggy super loose at the bottom you know i took them in and i also put sewn in creases inside of them i am the inv inventor of that I've been doing that ever since a few years after I got out of high school. You know, I haven't seen no other jeans in the world with sewn in creases. You know what I'm saying? Never. I've never seen nobody walk around with it. Just so y'all know, if y'all start seeing people with sewn in creases in their jeans, you know where, they, where it came from. You know, because I know how YouTube catch on, the internet catch on, especially if I get a lot of views, don't try it. And I love doing this to my jeans because it gives it a nice, distinct look to it. You know, it don't matter how how baggy the jeans are, how they're sitting, it always got that that sharp crease. And you can still iron it with the crease. Like I had got a compliment yesterday about the jeans and stuff like that. They were like, "Oh, I like how how creased your jeans are." I'm like, "Actually, these are sewn in creases." And then he was like, "Oh, well, I like to iron my creases in." I'm like, "Well, you can still iron these. You know, you can still iron them. You know, like you normally would." It's just that, you know, having them sewn in, it makes it look like a certain type of, it gives a certain type of look. Cause like, even when you got your leg bent, you know how the crease kind of like opens up, that don't happen. You know, it's still a crease going down. So that's what I love about it. And then also with these jeans that I got on, I did two extra little short creases on each side at the top. I also did that to some other pair of jeans a long time ago and stuff like that. Just to give it, it gives a nice little look. You know, you know how they have jeans where it got the little scratches in it and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a fashion statement, if you will. So I like it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing to a handful of jeans and jean shorts. You know, um, denim shorts, taking them all in. All of them have been taken in. You know, they were way too big. The only pair of jeans I did not take in is the uh, green pair of jeans. And those are the ones all I did was with those would put sewn in creases and put a fin at the bottom of uh, each leg. And that's, you know, because sometimes I got to put a rubber band at the back of my jeans because they be too, they be hanging at the bottom, they be too baggy, you know, so I sew like a little, like a little, what I like to call a fan. I did that to a couple of, another pair of my jeans a long time ago as well. So, um, yeah, man, your boys, I invented, I used to be working with the clothing before, like, this came, man, like, the dancing still came first, like, way before anything, but next was, the next thing up was the clothing, you know, ever since middle school, you know, our junior high school. Now, let's talk about the history of how I got into, you know, customizing clothes and stuff like that, because I have been doing this stuff for a very long time, way before the filming, way before my son was born. That's how long I've been doing it. You know what I'm saying? My son's about to be 14 years old next year. So, and I got my sewing machine, the one that you see inside this video, the same one I've ever been using. I do want to get another one. Um, and I would have been got another one if I never would have stopped sewing and stuff. Cause I did stop for years, but uh, I break it out every once in a while when I got a little project if I, or if I want to customize something that I got or something like that. 
bam, I break it out, dust it off real quick, and boom. But I brought this sewing machine about four months before my son was born. That's how I remember it so clearly. So it's over 13 years old. And I finally broke this bad boy out to work on this project that I've been putting off for a long time. Not really putting off, but you know, I needed to, I needed to have time to do this and it took two days. So I need to have time and then time to want to do it. So both of those had to come into factor, you know what I'm saying, in order for me to do this. And I, I'm glad and I'm happy that I finally got it done because now it feels like I got me uh, like 10 new pair of jeans and, sh and shorts now that I can wear, you know, because I got all this stuff brand new, you know, barely either, either they were brand new or barely worn about once or twice and name brand, you know, like what I got on right now is Rockaware, you know, Rockaware jeans. I got uh, uh, Echo and stuff too. A few of them was Echo. So in school, way back in high school or not, well, before high school, junior high school and stuff like that. You know, I used to like, I'm, and I'm still that type to like to dress different than everybody else, look different than everybody else, but still look hella fly, but always have my own little swag, my own little way I do it. Like the same thing with the one sleeve rolled up and then this one rolled down. Even if I have both rolled down, I always have my, always have my cuff up like this. And I'm glad that this shirt got like a design under the cuff because that's how I wear my cuff on my button-up shirts all the time. It don't matter if I'm at a job interview, church, no matter. This is how I wear my button-up shirts with the cuff rolled up like that. So um, sometimes I have this rolled up, uh, rolled down or whatever, but since I got the little, you know, film tattoo, you know, I got that bad boy rolled up. So basically in school, I like to be different. So the first thing I was doing before I got a sewing machine, I used to sew by hand. I used to buy little t-shirts and stuff like that that had like little designs on it that was also on a uh, sleeve, but, but short sleeve though. I used to cut off the sleeve because I always wear my uh, sleeves cut off anyway. So I used to cut off the sleeves, sew the sleeve together, you know, by hand, bam. And then put like two or three rubber bands at the tip of uh, one end of the sleeve to where it's like a little thing hanging cut the little tip of whatever sleeve is hanging out, cut it to where it's like frizzy a little bit, and then put it on like a little hat, thing be hanging, got the little shirt that match, put the little button up shirt over it. Like some people looking at it like it's weird, but most people was like, damn, that shit is dope, bro. Like what the hell? People used to want me to make them. So I could've been making money, but I didn't want nobody dressing like me. That's why I used to love trends. Cause when everybody was dressing alike, like each other, that was my time to, you know, do my own little thing. You know what I'm saying? Like definitely stand out, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody too busy looking at, like each other, you know what I'm saying? I'm the only one, one of the only few that's looking different, you know, besides the punk rock kids and stuff like that. But <laughs> other than that, I'm looking different, coming to school fly and stuff. I used to, clothing is realistically what I'm supposed to be inside right now when it comes to fashion. Like, people like that with the high school with me still ask about that stuff. Like, what happened to the clothing and stuff? Do you still customize clothes? Using a sewing machine, I taught myself. Read the book, the whole booklet that came with my sewing machine before I even plugged it up. I read the whole entire thing, got myself familiarized with the different needles I gotta use based on if, if it's denim or if it's a, a thinner material, but denim is the most easiest thing to work with. So I fell in love with working with denim. That's all I used to love working with. Work, making all kind of outfits, all kind of little, uh, little, my own little bandanas and stuff. Man, come on, man. I used to be ill. Like, <laughs> like I used to have my uh, friends, parents and stuff telling me like, dude, like you need to connect with Jay-Z, connect with these people. You're going to be big. Like if you keep on doing what you're doing, dude, just keep doing it. You're going to be like amazing because this fashion stuff, you only in high school and you're doing this stuff like it's nothing. Like, so you need to keep on doing that. But I kind of like fell out of it and stuff like that. You know, I kind of, I don't know. I, I, I was heavy into it, man. The ladies at the fashion at the fabric store need to, used to know me, you know what I'm saying, on a regular, like know me by name and everything and say hi to me every time they see me, picking up little buttons and zippers and thread and all that. Man, I miss those days. But now it's the filming, like in the YouTube stuff. I can't it's too much. Like that's too much time. I'm thinking about next year getting back into the making making beats and producing, you know what I'm saying, some music and stuff like that. And then on top of that, me and my son bring the gaming channel back. That'd be too much work for me to be trying to get full time back on the sewing machine. But I am though, because I'm about to start my own little business. You know, what I'm gonna do is um, what I'm doing right now, charging people $15 to put the sewn in creases in their jeans. You know what I'm saying? If you want the ones where it got the little extra little boom, that's $20. So yeah, if you like what you see, you know what I'm saying? Uh, $15, two for 25, I'll let your boy. You know, it take about, each pair take about 30 minutes, you know what I'm saying? I can get it done in 30 minutes. It's real easy. Just take the take the jeans, iron it, you know, make sure the crease is right and stuff like that. And then after that, put the little pins in because when you're sewing, and I'm going to say this, uh, when you're sewing, it looks like, because every single time I used to watch people sew, there's two things I couldn't understand when it comes to a sewing machine. 
are they pushing the fabric through? And how, how they know how fast to push it through? No, you're not pushing it through at all. The sewing machine is pulling it through. So that's what the pins are for, because there's teeth that lifts up and pulls the fabric like that. You know what I'm saying? So it looks like I'm pushing it, but I'm really not. You're guiding it through. You're not pushing nothing. When you push, if you're pushing it, you're doing it wrong. You're guiding it through. And then the other thing I can understand is if the thread is on top and the needle is going th down and it's going up and down, how the hell is the thread getting locked together? Like, I don't understand it. The thread that's underneath, which is called the bobbin thread. You know what I'm saying? that You, you, you spew that up. I got a little video clip of that. Don't know if it's popped up yet. And all I know is I'm lollygagging on the commentary. Hopefully, I'm not talking too much to where I don't got enough B-roll to show you motherfuckers. But, <laughs> yeah. I got you kind of like timed in my head, you know how your boy do it. But yeah, the little bobbin thread at the bottom and stuff like that, kind of that's kind of like your gas tank, you know what I'm saying? If you're out of that, there's no sewing. There's plenty of times where I ran out of bobbin thread and I kept on going and I'm wondering like, what the hell is going on? Why it's not sewing down? And I'm looking at the bottom, oh, I'm out of bobbin thread. That's your gas. That's your gas tank. So I hope you guys enjoyed the little commentary. I decided to do it on the green screen, you know, for a number of reasons, because I haven't did commentary on the green screen in a very long time. I admit a little bit of laziness. And then also the second reason is because people were saying that uh, when I did do videos with me on the green screen with the video playing in the background, it makes the video feel way more engaging, way more in touch with everybody out there that's watching. So pause, you know, I ain't trying to be in touch with y'all. I will say I want to be in touch with the ladies, but your boy already taken already, so y'all kind of late, you know, but. So I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video of me on the green screen, giving you guys the commentary of what I'm doing inside the video and also how I got started with the sewing and stuff like that. Of course, I touched on the very, very bare, bare minimums because I could talk forever about how I got started in the details. So yeah, man, with that said, let me stop lollygagging and let you guys get to the rest of the video. Enjoy the little, you know, fashion show and enjoy the rest of the commentary.
So I put the H right here, you know what I'm saying, with the fabric underneath and stuff like that. A little zigzag stitching. Like I said, I like random stuff, so, you know. I did the little uh, fabric on the side right here going up. On the back right side leg. Um, we got the little Leo sign right here. I did like a little decorative thing inside there. Same thing with the letters. And you see how it goes like pointy and then it gets wide and it goes back pointy for these little small little stitches. Something that simple is actually not that simple to do. So as I'm sewing, so as I'm sewing, so this, if you got it set to zero, it's going to do a regular stitch. If you set it to one, it's going to zigzag back and forth, but small though. So in order to get it pointy and then wide and then back pointy, as I'm sewing, literally as I'm sewing, I got to steady my hand and turn this like that as I'm sewing and then turn it back. So, you know what I'm saying? Now when you look at this little simple design, it's not as simple as it seems, huh? So y'all just put in work, man. <laughs> And in this case, you're wondering, this other knob is for how, how wide the stitches are. So if I got this set to, uh, to one, the stitches are gonna be super close together. So to five, the stitches are gonna be far apart. From scratch, this a jacket alone is the best thing I ever made, in my opinion. I gotta finish it and put wool in the inside. But, or some type of, yeah, I'm gonna put wool in the inside like I plan on doing. On the back, got the big ass H. Got the Hershey's, another thing I invented is a neck collar. So instead of a collar going all the way around, it just hangs down right there. Something different, kind of weird, but when I be having it on, I get compliments. I haven't worn it in a super, super long time. This stuff just stays folded up and hung up inside my closet. I don't even, I've been forgetting I got this stuff sometimes, to be honest with you. And on all my jeans stuff, I always fold the fabric under and sew it. I always like the way it looks, the underneath fabric looks. All right, so there's some more things I forgot to show that I really wanted to show you guys. I wanted to make sure I didn't forget, but I did anyways. I got some drawings of designs that I had did for like outfits that I made and that I was planning on making. Look, all my little notes and stuff right there. Yeah, this was the next jean outfit I was supposed to work on. Then the jacket to it. This right here is a whole outfit for a female, female outfit, a jean skirt outfit. With a little fur. This is the one I made for my friend. Am I so damn young? That's crazy. Here's a jacket to it. It was pink, her favorite color was pink. It was pink, black, and white. The stitching was white and, and pink, and the fabric was black, I think. 